dual review is brought to you by spiderwolf.com. On today's dual review, it's Roma, the tabletop game. I'm RJ. And I'm Nick. Let's get to it. Hey everybody, today is August the 14th and we're taking a look at Roma. That's right, and this game came out in 2005, it's by Queen, uh, what is it called, Queen Games, and the designer is Stefan Feld. And honestly, we kind of wanted to bring this to your attention, a uh, friend of us, Theron again. Thank you, Theron. Theron. Everyone, uh, one at a time, everyone at the same time. Thank, thank you, Theron. Theron. Yeah. Uh, he let us borrow this game, he had gotten it free um, when he ordered from Kickstarter Escape, which we'll get to right. in, a, in a, you know subsequent week here but anyway um so we played and we're like how good can this be it's like it's all brightly yellow and it's about rome and whatever we open it up and it's got kind of kind of you know what look like wimpy components it's like ah it's fun yeah surprisingly so we're reviewing it hooray good job queen games oh well, we would have reviewed it anyways so essentially the game is uh you you have a cast of characters in a group of buildings and that's essentially all of these cards building uh buildings and characters and then you have these dice tiles. Each it's a one two-player game. Yes, it is only a two-player game, unfortunately. But I don't see why you can't play with more. You just need more dice. But whatever. Um, you're going to create your field, and it's going to be laid out like this, um, where you have the dice. Each one is they obviously are dice. So we have six, five, four, three, two, one. And then you have cards, and then a money. So these are the cards and money tile uh, that you have. Move them all back. Yep, that's what I'm doing now. And you're going to put them as a barrier between you two because you're going to place your cards underneath each of the tiles. So you start off with four cards. One, two, three, four. Hello, one, two, three, and four. And I'm going to get. I'm going to give you a fifth because it's your birthday. How about that? There you go. You're, Don't you're not, want it. You're not supposed to give the fifth. So, yeah, you start off with four and you're supposed to give two to your opponent. Right, that's how you Which start I the game. That's not really necessary, but it does give that kind of like you're, you're kind of setting your have. strategy. So... So, whatever, I'll, I'll just give you those two. Hooray! Hooray! Oh, now I know what you have. Okay. So, now you're going to place your cards face down, and this is the only time that you place face down cards um, underneath each uh, tile here. And I'm just going to go one through four, and apparently he's going to go six through... Oh, he skipped two. Oh, no, he skipped five as well. Yep. And okay. there's actually some strategy here. Because, for instance, I have a forum, and there are other cards that add to this forum, but right. they need to be on either side. So I'm going to go ahead and leave a gap right here, just in case I draw that next time. Anyway. Right. So, uh, and then we start off with, what is it, like? Ten. Ten. Ten victory points? Ten victory points for each. And... They're represented in increments of two and one. Right. And you'll lose your, your victory points often, more specifically when it's your turn. Any open space that you have, for me it would be five and six, every open space that I have I'm going to lose one. So in this case I'm going to lose two at the start of my turn, um, which I guess I'll just go ahead and do. And then I'm going to roll my dice, and I rolled a 1, a 5, and a 6. Unfortunately, I don't have anything on 5 or 6, but I do have something on 1, so I could put that there and then pay the cost uh, for this one. But in order to do that, I would need money, so I'm going to put 6 on the money tile to indicate that I want 6 money, 6 gold, or 6 septums, or whatever the hell they are. And then I'm going to yeah, put Yeah, it's the... like Stercy or whatever. Stercy, yeah, the official monetary uh, mon money... Unit of, of Rome, yeah. Yes, Thank you. <laughs> and uh, I don't think you have to pay for these that are already down. You oh. have to pay for subsequent from your hand. Right. Okay. I, I guess that's right. I guess so. Anyways, so I'm going to put that one there. Mine says that uh, you attack the, uh, the the ones in yellow, by the way, are character cards. The ones in green are are um, uh, building cards is the word I was looking for. Uh, and this one's going to be able to attack that one. But I also put five here next to the cards, which means that I can draw five cards um, to choose from. But I'm only allowed to keep one. So there's my five. Hooray. Haru, I say. Haru. Uh, da, 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 da. So we're going to flip mine over, and it actually happens to be the same card, um, for him to see what the cost of defense is, or, you know, attacking this. I have five defense right here. So he has to roll a uh, five or six in order to defeat this. Right. So this one actually doesn't get flipped over because it's not my dice, but he just needed to see the defense. So right. stay in there. Um, and this is the combat die, which we use to indicate battle. Um, and these are our regular die. I'm the red and he's the blue, apparently. 
Uh, so I rolled a three, so I don't think I kill him. Nope. Uh, so that's that's kind of it for my turn. Um, uh, but I can choose... Oh, right, I get my six gold, thank you. Um, I can choose to pay uh, money to put a card down, but unfortunately I'm not going to, so this is going to stay in my hand, and I can have as many cards as I want in my hand, um, but I can only keep one of the cards that I can draw. So that's that's that. Okay, so now it's my turn. I have two spaces available, so I, I get rid of two victory points, and then I roll my dice and do the same thing that he did. So I got a five. There's nobody at five, so I'm probably going to take five money. There is a six. Let me see if I want and I, I do want to do, so discard any one of your opponent's building cards. Nero is discarded as well, so I'm just going to go ahead and activate that, but save it. And then I guess I'll get five cards, so I'll draw five cards. We continue that way. Now the game ends. If I get rid of all his victory points, he gets rid of my victory points. So in other words, your opponent has no victory points. Or all the victory points are claimed by one of us, and then right. the person with the most victory points wins. So it's a very simple dynamic. Um, and yeah, at first it's kind of like, what are these discs? What are they, you know, kind yeah. of like, they, they're kind of cheap looking, whatever. And, but it kind of, I mean, you, you expect that, okay, I have a four, so obviously I'm going to try to roll a four and put the four on there. That's literally how it works. Not with this die. It's just that we have, you know, these cards that they will act activate or not. So, right. so let's say, so I've got these two basilicas, which are really nice cards. Now they actually need a forum though to be effective. So right now, cause they have an X over their dice, which means I can't really use them right now. So I'll need to have a forum in the future, but if I pay, uh, or I'm sorry, if I roll one, this is your die, but whatever, or no, it's mine. No, that's right. You're blue. usually blue. Um, if I roll one, then it's activated, and then I can roll my attack die to see if I kill this one, and I do, so it's gone, it goes Bye -bye. in the discard pile, and now when he starts, he's going to have to pay an extra victory kind of thing. So it's kind of a back and forth, and you use what cards are available to the best of effect, but you have to roll their number in order to use their effect. Right. Um, and yeah, and unless they're one of these that has no dice requirement, and then they need to be adjacent to somebody else. Yeah, usually, or there's like a defense tower that adds one to everybody. So it's it's very straightforward. Um, I don't think that we had the easiest time reading the instructions. Yeah, it's but kind of... it's just kind of one of those things that everybody's got a unique approach, and so it's always jarring to read a new instruction book for a while, at least for us. Some people apparently get it just like that. I'm looking at you, Phil. <laughs> uh, which we're thankful for because yes. he's part of our group, so we can be like, "Hey, Bill, how do you do this again?" Um, but um, but once we started playing, it's literally one of those things that I think all games should have kind of a quick start tutorial. Because once you start playing, it's as easy as pie. It's yep. so easy, um, but it's fun enough, and it's I don't know, it, it's it's unique enough and fun. I don't. Yeah, it, it's what definitely got it, no, it's definitely got a unique um, aspect to it, and I and I like these simple games where you can just come out and play for like you know, 10, 20 minutes, and then just, you know, move on with your day if you have to. Um, they're just, they're, they're a lot of fun because they're like, they're like palate cleansers, I think is the term that yeah. we usually use. And I really enjoy the mechanic of, let's say, I, you know, I rolled this six. Well, I can put the six, you know, right here if I have a card I want to activate. But I can also use this six to get six money or six cards. Right. So there is that kind of strategy. Like, do I want to, do I want to activate as many cards as possible and lay off the money right now? Or am I going to need the money in the future, like say right now, in order to put this card down, which will then get two victory points from him, you know, kind of thing. So there is definitely enough planning, but there's also the luck involved. It's all dependent on what you roll. Right. But more often than not, what you have in mind, um, if you played right, you can figure out how to do it each turn. So, you know, there are, there are cards that allow you to, to move one up, you know, kind of, or I'm sorry, not that die, but move a die up, actually, it would count for this. Uh, so there's there's a lot of breadth. There's right. there's cards that you pay for and immediately will destroy that card and a card of your opponent that's flipped up, you know, kind of thing. Uh, so those can be very, very valuable. And, yeah. Um, um, he usually goes for money, and he's lost so far. Well, it's not that I'm he not usually sure goes for money. It's, it's that worst thing. I, I don't plan out do. my cards very well, or I don't have good cards to use. Or I just don't roll the card, the the die that I need. So I've I've lost. I'm 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 blaming that. But you kick that. my ass if you got that one dude that lets you play two sisterci pay two sisterci to me right. to take one of my victory points right. without my you know approval. Right. It just happens. Um, and I guess that's also something that I wanted to talk about real quick. Let's say I roll uh, doubles. Let's say I roll two threes. I can put both threes on the same disc, or for that matter, all three. Let's say I roll the triplet of threes. I can use that three times to use this card three times, but I don't want to do that because this card only works on his character cards and he only has two. Um, so I can double up on a, a single time. It should also be noted, since you did do all three, that if you roll three all the same, you can roll again. Right. So you you do have one chance if you're if it's weird enough that you get three of the same, because you know, a lot of times you don't want to have three of the same. You want to have three different numbers. 
Um, but there are a lot of cards also that it's like, say, say I have, you know, that card that I'm thinking of on a two. I think it's a gladiator or something. No, it's, it's a centurion, right? Right. Centurion card allows you to roll the attack, but also use one of your unused die. So I could bolster this by one. So now instead of a five attack, I get a six attack. So hopefully that would kill whatever is opposing. Um, that's another thing is that a lot of the cards that are the people, the soldiers have a requirement of, you know, can attack the opposing card. So if it's on a one and there's nothing else here, there's nobody I can attack right yep. now. But there are a few that allow you to attack anybody in the road kind of thing. So so again, there's enough variety here to keep it really interesting. Centurio. And I and I do really kind of enjoy this. It's one of those things like I didn't think I'd like it and in this like really big discs with that looks kind of stupid or what but I I like this game. It's a fun I game. It's fun. Surprisingly fun. Very 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 interesting because not only do you have to worry about like let's say let's say that you want to take off, just wipe his board. Well, then, because he, he both has characters and buildings, you're going to need a card that attacks character and a card that attacks buildings. Right. Right. So, uh, so like these cards cannot attack buildings; they sorry. only can attack other characters. There's catapults and stuff for buildings. There's weapons for. I mean, there's people for, uh, um, for characters. There's... And there's cards that allow you to move your own building. So if I had been short sighted and put one of these, you know, a forum or something on the end and then another character, but I really want to keep this character, then I can move this if I use that card. Right. Um, that's another thing, is that if you do play a character, you can switch it at any time, but the new character you have to you put down, you have to... replaces this one, and you have to pay for the gold. Right. So you're getting rid of characters. Um, yeah, and discarded cards, uh, once you draw you know, five or whatever, and you take one, you discard the four, that goes through the whole entire deck, and when the deck is gone, you reshuffle. So if there's any cards that you're like, oh boy, I wish I had that, you have another thing back. again. So, well, yeah. Although there is one character that lets you go through the discard pile, I believe. Uh, yeah. Unless I'm getting that Probably. confused. Probably. Um, so, so let's just say that I'm going to put that there, um, which means that the next round I'm only going to get rid of, uh, what is it, one, one victory point because of that. Um, this one lets... one gap. Yeah, because the one gap. This one lets me attack any building. Now, buildings are nice because they mostly deal with gaining more victory points, especially forums and whatever that is. The Basilica. Basilica. Yeah. Basilica. So the forums in Basilica let you gain stuff. So I'm going to attack his um, his number six over here, whatever that is, Basilica. No, I, you know, you don't have a form. So let's say I do that, uh, I'm, and you know, I did everything that lets me do that, so just pretend. Um, where's the attack die? Where's the attack die? Okay. Oh, it's right here. Okay, so I'm going to attack the die, and use the attack die. I rolled a five. Now every card has a defense. I rolled a five, I swear. I rolled a def. I mean, I... Uh, uh, Already cheating. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I roll a five. Now his defense is five. Usually, in most games, the defending player, uh, if, if on ties, the defending player wins. But in this game, even if you tie, the attacking player wins. So you need to get a. F in this case, the the shield underneath the gold that it costs to put it out is five. Uh, since I rolled a five, then this one is negated and I win. So goodbye, Basilica. You don't win. You just get rid of the bill. I win the game. <laughs> no, I I, w I win the battle. So anyway, there there is definitely chances to catch up too if you're feeling a little overwhelmed kind of thing. It just all kind of depends on your strategy and then luck. So so yeah, a, a palletizer is a great word for it. It's, yeah. it's a very fun game. I'm I'm really surprised at how much because I don't typically like you know putting buildings out. And I don't really like Rome aesthetic and all that. I'm not really into that. But this is such a straightforward, easy game, and of course it helps when you win. But <laughs> it's fun. So I think that's it. Um, thanks for watching. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel. And uh, follow our great playlists. Game Lab's been a lot of fun. Yes, it has. And please leave comments. We love comments. And you can help support us by buying our wares at spiderwolf.com. That's right. T-shirts, a card game, art print, short stories, and more. And if you're on Facebook, so are we. So find us and friend us. And if I'm online, I will talk to you for hours at end. <laughs> Blogging. You heard it here first. We'll talk to you forever, apparently. For, for hours on end, I said. For hours on end. So please, put him to the test. Also, we're blogging. You can find me, fisk37.tumblr.com. I'm blogging as characters, releasing character sheets, a glimpse into the world I've created for 10 plus years. Take a look. If you like it, share it. Support me that way. And my blog is nicholasbach.tumblr.com, and it's essentially just short stories and poetry. So if you're interested, just check that out. All right, guys. See you. Finally got one. You got a good choice. Coming up, the anime, play more. Finally got one.
But you had a good choice. Or a good chance. Good choice. I'm getting too hot. I can't say words with the thing. Words with the thing. From my mouth. Murph. Nick has literally not won this game yet. But it is fun. Yeah. <laughs> it's not really like his fault or anything. Sometimes they're just stacked against you. Or you're playing against the birthday boy and you let him win. I don't think I do that. No, you don't. Obviously, watch yesterday's review. Stole my point. Benefit. Steal anything. <laughs> yeah, I am very surprised at how much I like this game. Because, I mean, look at it. <laughs> no, yeah, I seriously, like these just floating discs. Like, okay, they just look like they're a prototype or something, but... You get used to them and you actually warm up to it and it's a fun game. And they need to be this big because that's about the size of the card, you know. It's fun. You know, I'm Nick. Did, didn't I do that? Yeah. I just felt like saying my name, apparently. Creepy.